Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren, aka Books McD, and you may have noticed some things are a little different. One, it's almost the end of January and I'm sitting in front of my Christmas tree. It'll be up as long as I want it to be up. Second thing is, I have a ring light. That wasn't a Christmas gift. I actually got this during the pandemic when the choir that I'm in was doing some virtual videos and we all had to record ourselves and everybody was like, ring lights are the best. But I'm realizing now that like, what are we supposed to do if we have glasses? Am I just supposed to do this the whole time? It's, it's like awkward, right? Is the angle supposed to be such that you can't tell? Well, that's uncomfortable. Let's just take these off. Cause also when it reflects in my glasses, I feel like I'm looking into headlights and it hurts my eyeballs. Um, also, these are really old and like dirty and I definitely need new ones. And so I can see this is, I don't really need to see this. Um, I need to see what I'm doing, but whatever. Also, um, peep the hair, I straightened it. So there you go. I'm doing a little video about like my Christmas haul. I think I've said enough times to all of my friends and family that like Barnes and Noble gift card will suffice. Uh, and then I think they realize like, hey, she really is a book person, not a human person. <laughs> I'm gonna make that joke every time? Yes. So I got a lot of books from my hubby. He's doing this thing now where he like buys my entire book list. And then I got some like book paraphernalia and some other book related items. And then I did like a mini me shopping trip right before Christmas. Um, and I got myself some other books. So like, I'll go over those too, whatever. It's a little haul video. You get it. The first stack has some Lord of the Rings stuff. Got a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff. So here's the deal. When I like a book series, I will buy multiple copies of it for the cover art or for like anything special about the book edition itself. And so I have several copies of Lord of the Rings with different cover art or maybe different internal illustrations. And so I already have these books in other versions, but I really like these and I wanted them. So they were on my list. <laughs> so the first one is the large like I don't usually love when all three books are like smashed into one book, but so this is The Lord of the Rings with The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and Return of the King. Ooh, sorry, it's still in its plastic wrap, so you can, ooh. It has illustrations from J.R.R. Tolkien in it, but I love the pages. So you see the red and the language, and I just, I don't know, I'm a sucker. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that, so I wanted this edition to add to my collection of other Lord of the Rings editions. To go with that, I had to get this also. Uh, same thing, love the edges. You can kind of see, uh, I don't know, ring light is making it difficult. So maybe are they better? I don't know. Uh, but you can see also uh, there is some green and some wording on the edges. Pretty, I got this just because it's pretty. When people say, don't judge a book by its cover, I'm, that's literally all I'm doing. So that was another item from my Christmas list that my hubby got for me. The rest of this deck is just a plethora of books I wanted to read and they happen to be on my list for a while. This is Babel by R.F. Kuang. Dark Academia. I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> I'm so good at making videos. R.F. Kuang. I think this is Dark Academia. Very popular right now. I think I'm seeing it a lot of like book lists and stuff. From award-winning author R.F. Kuang comes Babel, a historical fantasy epic that grapples with student revolutions, colonial resistance, and the use of language and translation as the dominating tool of the British Empire. Ooh, an act of translation is always an act of betrayal. Set in 1828, like there's just a lot of things that I love about the book already, but I'm very interested. I know a lot of people have read The Poppy War. I haven't read that yet. I, I've been having trouble reading. For me to jump into like a trilogy, I don't know that that's something I can do right now, just in terms of how I've been reading. But I did make a reading spreadsheet this year to keep up with like a page, a daily page goal and a book count goal by the end of the year to try to help me like get through some of the reading. And I know it's like, oh, get through some of the reading. You must not be enjoying it. It's like, I don't know what it is, but like I can't concentrate anymore. I don't know that it's necessarily specific to the pandemic, but I do really have trouble focusing when I'm trying to sit down and read. So for me, just right now, a trilogy isn't what I wanna jump into, despite the fact that I just literally showed you that copy of Lord of the Rings. Just, I'm not gonna jump into it right now, plus I already read it, so whatever. This next one is Tom Felton's memoir, Beyond the Wands. Okay, so obviously Tom Felton was in Harry Potter. I used to feel like I had specific knowledge about Harry Potter, 
But then, you know, I didn't like the direction they were going with Fantastic Beasts, uh, and I didn't like Cursed Child. There was a lot of things that I wanted to ignore as canon, and J.K. Rowling is, like, super transphobic, and it, I don't know if that's, like, the order of operations or the order of events as they occurred, but all that stuff combined is, like, now I'm kind of leaning away from Harry Potter. I still like it. Harry Potter came into my life during a time when I was, like, maybe having a quarter-life crisis, and I was like, this, this magic is keeping my life together. But, you know, I can't support J.K. Rowling in the things that she says, and so I, I'm, I'm not as passionate about Harry Potter as I once was. I do probably still have some expert knowledge because I used to read it every year. I listened to it multiple times. So there's just things that stick in your craw, uh, stick in your craw, things that are still in your memory from having read it multiple, multiple times. Um, okay, fine hair. You know, you try. <laughs> Cause tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. All right. Oh my God. Every video this year is going to be as chaotic as the last, if not more. So put on your hats. Okay, so I wanted to read this. Uh, I don't know if he's a great person or not. Kind of would love some feedback on that because I haven't really looked into him much. But I was wondering what the experience of growing up as a child actor on the set of Harry Potter, which was, I mean, it was a cultural phenomenon. So I was wondering what that experience was like interested to read this for those reasons. So that is uh, Tom Felton's, did I say Tom Holland earlier? I hope I didn't, but that's Tom Felton's memoir there. Then I got, then I got Madly Deeply, Alan Rickman's Diaries. I, am I gonna cry talking about this? So I have a story from when my husband and I first moved into this house. It was empty, we were still like in our apartment slash in the house, there was nothing in here yet. But we were just so excited as new homeowners that we were like, we're gonna just go sleep in the empty house. That was exciting to us. So we got a little air mattress. We were like, we're sleeping here. The next morning, my husband woke me up early, abruptly early, like I'm a noon sleeper, <laughs> to each their own. But he woke me up at like 7 a.m. and was like, Lauren, Alan Rickman died. So to be woken up abruptly in that way, I just immediately started crying. I, that was my reaction from being awoken to that news from like the middle of a deep sleep. And it was just sad. I think that, you know, I did know him through Die Hard and Harry Potter and of course a lot of other movies, Sense and Sensibility. He's done so many things. And uh, I think as an actor, I was really interested in his work, although I did not like his character in Love Actually, please, thank you. And I really enjoyed his work. I really enjoyed his accent and his voice. He was just somebody that I liked to watch in movies. Obviously, I had seen him a lot in Harry Potter as Professor Snape, and so I associated him with that the most, probably. Later on that day, we decided to just go driving around in the county just to get used to where we live and find out where things are. And we're driving through all these neighborhoods. And in the middle of the day, in the middle of somebody's yard, there was just a doe standing there. And immediately I started crying again <laughs> because like guys the Patronus we all know and so I took a picture of it and I posted it on Facebook and I was like Ellen Rickman oh my god when this book came out I was just really interested to see more of his normal life as an actor as a human being as a person what his little thoughts and you know writings were and so I'm really interested to read this uh, really interested in Alan Rickman as a person. I've only ever known the actor on the screen, obviously. So uh, to see his diary entries, to see little, even if it's just, hey, pop to the store today, I'm just curious about how he was as a person. So that will be interesting to read as well. Switching gears completely, <laughs> I got this Star Wars knitting book. <laughs> I can't even really knit. Like I do knit, but I'm also not great at finishing projects. So I have a pile of projects in a closet, whatever. And some of them are like the start of knitting projects, but I never finished. So like, can we say I've actually knit anything? I don't know. I'm more of a crocheter. I wanted this just because, you know, I didn't want it to be like discontinued eventually or go away. And I think I could get there. I could get to this level of knitting, but I just, you know, I wanted to make sure that I had it in my arsenal. So this is the Star Wars Knitting the Galaxy book. A lot of cute stuff in here. I don't know that I like have the skill set yet, but I'm really excited to get this and uh, check some of that stuff out. Okay, moving on from books, I just wanna go through some like book-related paraphernalia that I received. Uh, I already mentioned these glasses in another video, so you've already seen them, but as a reminder, one of the cool things I got was these glasses. They allow me to sit up 
and look down at the same time because they are mirrors and so you can be reading with like better posture for your back. Very fun, even though they look weird. In addition to that, I got this cool setup, we'll call it. So I got this thing, which I didn't even take out of the box yet, but it's essentially just like a, just like an arm that clips to the table and then it goes around an e-reader. And uh, it's because I like to be hands off. <laughs> we keep it really cold in our house. I wanna be in a comfy or a snuggie or under 10 blankets and I can't move my arms. And if you're thinking, well, wait, Lauren, that just holds it for you, but what about the pages? You'd be right. Good point. So I got this thing, which like, I should probably just show it in a demonstration at some point. So this clips on to the one side of the e-reader that you would turn the pages forward on. And then you have this little remote and you push the button under your piles and piles of blankies and this changes the page for you. So I'm gonna have something holding my e-reader for me. I'm gonna have something turning the pages for me and I'm just gonna be <laughs> under a pile of blankets. Um, because we keep it like 60 degrees in here because heating is expensive. Anywho, so that's some paraphernalia. Also got this thing, which technically not really book related, but it's like a soft headphone head wrap. Uh, headphones always fall out of my ears and I don't wanna wear like my good noise canceling headphones on a walk. So this is like a perfect alternative for like taking a walk and listening to <laughs> the headphones not in the right place, I can feel it. But this is a great alternative for like, ooh, yeah, hey, how's, how's it going? This is a good alternative for like go, taking a walk and listening to an audiobook. I like it because it's soft uh, and cute. It's soft and cute, just like me. <laughs> Some other book related items I got that aren't exactly books. So these are from my stepdad and I really like when we send each other unique book things sometimes, unique movie things sometimes. We both share a love of Ratatouille. And so one time I sent him this like little thing for his shelf. We're both bibliophiles and uh, we both like knickknacks on our bookshelves. One like little thing, cheap thing that I got him from Etsy, but I love it. I almost want to get myself one. From Ratatouille, it's just like a little chef hat with a light in it. And in the light, when the light is on, it's a shadow of Remy, the little rat. So just cute little like things, knickknacks for the bookshelf. So he got me these, which are really cool. And I want to figure out a way to display in front of a nightlight in the library, like when I'm not in there. So basically they're, they're for kids, but like they're cool because they're like book stuff. So they're these things called shadow play. They're, they're books with like silhouette forms so that when you put them in front of the light, the shadows like project on the wall. And I think that's so cool because I think like that could just make the library feel like have a vibe. The thing is, is he got me also the, a little prince, which the little prince, excuse me, which I really love the little prince. And I have a copy of my mom's book from like, I won't age my mom, but I have an old, old ancient old ancient copy of the little prince she's probably gonna be like why did you say it that way <laughs> but uh so he got me a the little prince and the nutcracker very cute i want to put it in front of like a nightlight type of thing so that i can see you can use it to just like see the silhouettes which are pretty but obviously i want to kind of like set it up with a nightlight so i can get like the projection of the shadows in the library i just think it's really cool that's some of my book paraphernalia that i got for the holidays so let's get back to some other books i got so actually the rest is Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so one thing I put on my list that was there for a while is basically the entire history of Middle-earth. The entire history of Middle-earth. This is part three. I had them on my lap backwards. This is part two. Mm, strong. This is part one. So the history of Middle-earth, it contains like 12 works total. I think I wanna be Don Marshall. <laughs> if you don't know Don Marshall, he's the obscure Lord of the Rings facts guy on TikTok. He has like a specialized knowledge about all things Lord of the Rings. And I'm so fascinated by fantasy and how much background is in the author's head of the world that we don't even necessarily see on the page. Think, thinking about in terms of Wheel of Time, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Fable Haven, any fantasy series, I would have to imagine if there's like rules and magic regulations in the series and different world building and there's maps. I just, I imagine there being just like a wealth of knowledge in an author's head about that world that they've built. 
And I'm so fascinated by that. Books have to be edited down, they have to translate well to the reader, and so the author isn't always able to include all of the things that are in their imagination. And with Lord of the Rings, we're lucky to have all of these extra bits, the history of Middle Earth, not just Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, but but extra tales outside of those stories as well. And I'm so interested in that. So these were something that were on my list for a long time. Am I going to breeze through these, especially given the fact that I didn't even want to jump into a new trilogy because I haven't been reading very well? No, but I think this is something I would say like, okay, maybe one part per day until they're done. So like over the next 10 years, probably like, who knows? So I'm just, I'm very into, I want to understand more about like the stuff we didn't get to see, right? So that that's what keeps me entertained uh, with Lord of the Rings. There's just a wealth of knowledge there, a wealth of fantasy world building. Then on top of that, I got uh, these, the Tolkien Treasury. So this includes The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, Farmer Giles of Ham, Roverandum, Smith of Wooten Major. Did I say those right? I don't know. I'm not Don Marshall. <laughs> But I think this is really beautiful. Again, still in the plastic because I'm still sorting through everything that I got. And also I have a bunch of Legos that I have to get on the shelf so that I can make more room for my books. But very excited. Again, wanted this for the same reasons as the history of Middle Earth because there's just so much in J.R.R. Tolkien's imagination. And even if it doesn't necessarily directly relate to Lord of the Rings, I'm curious. So that was the remainder of my Christmas haul. So these next books are from a little trip before Christmas that I took for me. I avoided purchasing anything that was already on my list. And I just purchased things that I'm gonna read with other book clubs or things that were super popular or things on the buy one get one half off table cause you know how it sucks you in like that. And so this is what I left with. Not a ton, but like probably 100% more than I needed. So the first thing I got, and I think I got this, yeah, this was on the buy one, get one half off table. I mentioned this in a prior video as well, uh, Black Cake. So I really wanted to read this. I actually got a copy from the library on ebook. I started reading it and then it like disappeared and it got taken away right away. I don't think I had my uh, thing on the right settings in terms of like how many days I could have it for. Earlier, I made a joke about like, don't look at the 50% off sticker. Um, it's not because I have anything against paying less for a book or even buying used books. It's more because I hate stickers. <laughs> I hate stickers on books. I really don't even like this thing. This thing says read with Jenna. I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, I Sure, but I don't want it on my book, but I can't do anything about it. So yeah, I'm mostly I was just saying like, I didn't take the sticker off yet, so don't look at it. But then I point right to... <laughs> Uh, with Black Cake, which I have mentioned in a prior video again, I got The Appeal. We'll review this in another video because I have feels and I have thoughts. I'm halfway through this right now. I'm thinking of doing like reading vlog type of thing where I just do, I don't know, we'll call it a random reading rant or something. They're not always going to be rants. They're more like just updates on where I am in certain books because I'm currently reading this. I'm currently reading Lunar Love. I'm currently reading The Priory of the Orange Tree. And I kind of have like partway through thoughts that I want to share. And I'm also like, ooh, am I predicting things correctly? Because this is a murder mystery. So I'm kind of like, am I right? Am I not right? Who done it? I'm not even at Who Done It yet, but I'm not even at the murder yet. But like, you know, I want to see if I'm right. So I might start doing like reading vlogs and like mid book update type things. So that was the other one that I got that was uh, buy one, get one half off. Then I'm going to read this with my book club on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. This book is a letter from a son to a mother. It talks about the Vietnam War and the family's struggles with going through that and how the family came out on the other side, generationally speaking. And uh, just as an FYI, I know that it's very well written from reviews, but Ocean Wong is the author of the critically acclaimed poetry collection, Night Sky with Exit Wounds, and also the best, the New York Times bestselling book on Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous. I can't imagine a, you know, an award-winning poetry collection. I can't imagine his way with words in this book, and I'm very excited to read it with my book club. I guess I should have said, <laughs> I guess I should have said what these were about. This is just a murder. It's told in emails. We'll save it for the review. It's fine. This one's actually also kind of a murder mystery. Two siblings, mother dies. 
and I don't feel like that's a spoiler because that's at the very beginning. That's like the part I already read, like chapter one. And they kind of are uncovering like after going through her will and there's like things to go through and paperwork to go through. She leaves them a recipe for Caribbean black cake and then like a story about something that happened when she was younger. And they're kind of like uncovering that as they go. So I'm just, I don't know, I love mysteries. So I'm interested. I think we went through everything so far. The next book is Lessons in Chemistry. Not gonna lie, I don't even know what this is about. I like the cover. I like the cover. I like the color and I like the pages. I'm a sucker. They got me. The marketing got me. To be fair, I did since purchasing it, read the inside flap. And I was like, okay, 1960, it seems like a woman in academia eventually has to deal with equality issues, ends up leaving academia. She's like teaching women how to cook, but they're like challenging the status quo. And I'm like, well, it's kind of right up my alley anyway. But I mean, I bought it because I like the cover and the pages. So maybe that's bad, but I do judge the book by the cover. Sorry. The last book I got is Fairy Tale by Stephen King. So I wouldn't have normally picked this up. Um, I can't believe I'm gonna say this because I, I have a friend who really likes Stephen King, but like he's not for me per se. <laughs> he's okay. It's just that I find his books to be like middle of the way for me. Middle of the way? I don't know, they're just mid for me. Not like they're average. I think it's partially because they're like mostly based in reality. And then at the very end, or like there's one set of circumstances that is like fantastical and it feels too convenient for me. I almost want to be completely based in fantasy or completely based in reality. And I don't know that I'm necessarily such a black and white person. Like I do think there's room for gray, but for some reason, I think that when Stephen King like throws in that little bit of fantastical, I almost feel like it's a, I don't know, it's like an out. It's like a trap door. Like, oh, I backed myself and I painted myself into a corner and I didn't really think of how to get out of here. And so now this person has telekinesis. You know, that's the kind of thing where <laughs> I'm like, it's reality, reality, reality. And suddenly this guy can move stuff with his mind. And I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> And I think that's where sometimes I just don't enjoy Stephen King stuff. Now, hey, I haven't read a lot of Stephen King and that might be his more, more recent works and not necessarily his classic works. I have read the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. I've read The Outsider. I've read The Shining. I've read Pet Cemetery. I've read quite a few, but like obviously not all of his works like my one friend has. So this one I've heard is kind of different from his typical fare. Maybe it's not, maybe I'm wrong. I haven't read it yet, but I was influenced to buy it. I, I don't not like his book, so I'm interested enough that I wanna give it a try. So I'm gonna read this with my friend who really likes Stephen King. And that was everything that I bought myself at Barnes and Noble when I didn't need to because it was almost Christmas. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with me through this Christmas haul slash whenever I buy myself presents haul. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe for more content, reading blogs, reviews, hauls. I am gonna be doing some unloading of books as well because I would like to try to actually read my physical TBR and it's a lot. So I have to kind of like catalog everything and go through that. I know I've said it multiple times, but it's hard to catalog all that stuff, especially because I have like Legos in the way of everything and I kind of got to get that stuff out of there. That being said, please like and subscribe. Please follow at Books McD on all social medias. I'm not even gonna list them, just all of them. All the social medias you can think of. And I also have a blog, Coffee, Read, Sleep, Repeat. Please let me know what I'm supposed to do with my ring light and glasses. I mean, I can obviously Google it, but I guess I just trust strangers on the internet more. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching and I will talk to you later.